Hello and welcome to the Riverfront Bengals Show, episode 31. We've been here way too long. We are the number one Bengals related show in the picturesque city of Roswell, New Mexico. I Roswell. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's alien to me that that would you know that, that that's the place where we're popular, but that news is out of this world. Extraterrestrial, if if you if you will. <laughs> I am half of your hosts. I am Joe Farsing. Alongside me is the bald, bronzed, currently beautiful, and now currently betrothed Nate Dodson. What's up, dude? Joe, it's good to be back. Uh, been a few weeks since I've done any podcasts, and as you alluded to, I was busy getting married to the most wonderful woman in Puerto Rico, which explains the tan. I'm not just hanging out at Palm Beach Tan in the local shopping mall every day, maybe every other day, but I don't know, man. Excited to uh, talk a little Bengals football with you, Bob. No tan lines? I, don't, I really don't want to know the answer to that one. That's for the Patreon-only episode. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus side, our last episode, without you, with our good buddy, friend of the Riverfront, Chris Garber, was our most viewed episode on YouTube, so take more vacations, man. That, that That's the moral of the story. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! On that note, why do people run from me? <laughs> I've been waiting to use that one for a while. <laughs> First, audio of- listeners, uh, get your get your shit together and get on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is a lot better. Not that we're good to look at, but it's a little more entertaining if you're uh, if you're watching us instead of just listening to us. I mean, we do have very smooth melodic tones. I've been told that you know we're just soothing. You know, we should both get into the ASMR stuff, but you know, uh, <laughs> get our, again, our OnlyFans or OnlyDads uh, dot com. Uh, get our subscriber numbers up. Uh, first order of business: if you like us, if you like the OG Riverfront with Chad and Nate and his various crew, or Late Night Reds with Tim Daniel. Uh, Carlos, uh, Chad and I were both on last Saturday, their last Sunday's episode, along with uh, Jordan Schusterman of uh, Suspicious Barbecue. Uh, consider joining us at patreon.com, Riverfront Cincy. You get access to the always fun Slack channel. Uh, we're always discussing Reds. Their opening day is tomorrow or be today Woo! when you guys are listening to it. I'm bizarrely excited. I know they're not going to be very good, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay with lowered expectations. I have drank all the Kool Aid. I have decided that they are going to be hovering around 500 at least in the second half of the season, and that's all. I, that's all I'm asking for. Just some some interesting baseball to watch post All Star break. So we start, should we start carving Will Benson's Hall of Fame bust now? I mean, I think Chad already has. Okay, hasn't made. Okay, yeah, uh, he's he's a little too too trim for me. I'm, I want I want really busty busts. I think we should get the sculptor from the um, Lionel Richie hello video. I think that would be unfamiliar. <laughs> you don't know the Lionel Richie hello. It's a blind woman and she's doing a bust of Lionel Richie. What is a video? What is, what is a music video? <laughs> it was this thing long time ago. You're not that much younger than I am. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back, back to the Slack, uh, back to uh, Patreon. We, we have a once a month live hangout. That should be coming up here. Uh, so we have a hell of a uh, fun time, guys. Uh, again, it's just a couple bucks a month if you guys are interested. So check it out. Uh, also, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, like I said, that's probably the best way to consume us. Uh, click like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Turn on notifications. Uh, you'll get two, three episodes a week from various platforms. Uh, we have a good time, all of us. So if you're listening, rate us five stars only. Shall we continue? We shall. Let's get into some actual topics. We'll get into them for the... Uh, Bengals uh, been a little bit heading into the slow part of uh, free agency. They did the big bulk of the work uh, a couple weeks ago that we talked about uh, two weeks ago. We didn't record last week. Um, they did resign a couple of their own. They brought back uh, Max Sharping, uh, offensive guard. He filled in a little bit when Kappa was hurt. Uh, did a terrible job, <laughs> but <laughs> he's got start. He's got starting. Uh, um, he's got a lot of uh, starts under his belt. Um, for depth, they, you know, you, you, you can do worse. Uh, That's they what I'm back- it's a, a no brainer. It's familiar with the system. He'll have a full year in the system this time. Uh, 
solid, cheap depth. Yeah. Still pray for health from the starters. Uh, and they brought back everyone's favorite backflipping son of a gun, Trent Taylor. Uh, he's the guy that the uh, victory uh, victory kneel down, flipping in the backfield. Uh, he, he was brought back on a one-year due. Happy to see him. Uh, he's a really good punt returner. He makes plays when he's out there as, you know, as a fourth, fifth receiver. So it's fun to see him back. He's a fun, uh, fun guy to have around. Yeah, nothing more to add to that. It's not, it's not a bad signing, by any way. I'm not going to, you know, throw a parade, but welcome back, Trent. Yeah, I mean, it's – and again, I, he's not guaranteed a spot. Uh, Bengals will bring – I we'll get into this a little bit today, but more in, uh, in soon when we get more into uh, draft. But they're going to bring a draft pick in, and that guy might take punt returning duties away, and Trent Taylor may be on the uh, – maybe a street-free agent by the end of training camp. But, again – Guys that know the system, never bad to have around. That's right. Um, outside free agents, the Bengals have brought in lately. Uh, we talked about this. It, uh, it literally popped up right before we started recording two weeks ago about Nick Scott. Uh, they ended up ended up signing him uh, three years, twelve million deal. Hard, hard hitter. Uh, smaller guy. He's he's not very big at all, but he hits like a Mack truck. He's uh, he's going to be Von Bell, except he's faster. Um, yeah, he's a freak athlete, and I have to ask. Um, is this the most athletic safety room in the NFL? It's crazy. It's got to be the fastest. Uh, Dax ran 4-3. Uh, Tyson Anderson ran a 4-3. He didn't get the field because he was injured all year. Um, Nick Scott, I think, was a 4-3 uh, coming out of college. Uh, these these guys are just really fast, and they're physical, uh, physical tacklers. Um, again, it's going to be different. It's going to be a totally different uh, second or, uh, safety group. We're used to the uh, security blanket that uh, that you had when you had Jesse Bates and Von Bell. These guys are more athletic. Um, who knows? I don't. I don't want to say talented because that's you know remains to be seen. But I, I think they can do more with them. But it's how soon are they going to be able to uh, uh, get up to speed on the program? Lou didn't have to have to coach those guys. Those guys knew what they were doing. If they made a mistake, they knew they made a mistake and they'd fix it. Uh, that's one thing Lou likes to do, though. That's coach safeties. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and and again, the more coach uh, defensive backs in general, even the cornerbacks, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Sidney Jones, uh, they signed him out of last out of um, uh, Philly, uh, six foot one hundred and eighty pounds. He's going to be the third cornerback, third or fourth, depending on how you uh, consider Hilton as the slot um, depth starter. He's got starting experience. If Cheeto isn't ready to go, and again, I I really don't know where to go with Cheeto. He's um, uh, as a couple weeks ago, he was working out. And working in the pool and getting some stuff back. So, but there's no word on where he is progress, right? I would assume he's ready to go by the season, but just in case he's not or there's a setback or something, you've got a guy with experience. Um, Eli Apple's still out there. They still might bring him back for, you know, just for depth, but they're good there if, you know, if, if they want to move on and maybe get a little less social media production out of their, uh, out of their cornerbacks. Yeah. I kind of think this Sidney Jones move is, Going to go one of two directions. It's something that we will never consider again after this season for the rest of our lives because it was just inconsequential. Or it could work out really, really well. This is the kind of low-risk, super-high-reward signing that I really like to see. The guy's 27 years old, so he's getting ready or hitting hitting his prime. He does have experience. I think he has a second-round draft pick pedigree. So there's talent there. And you you get lucky on these guys sometimes. And if you don't hit it, then it's just like you said, he's a third or fourth cornerback and he might just be a little bit of Eli Apple insurance. Do you think we get Eli back? Um, I think there's a chance that if he does come back, it's going to be a signing right before training camp. I think he's going to wait and try to see how everyone, you know, or teams are going to wait and see how this final, uh, final wave of free agents goes and the draft before he finds a team. Um, I think he'd like to come back if, you know, if everyone's offering him similar situations, I think he'd like to come back. He's comfortable here. Uh, the, the team can handle his uh, eccentricities. Is, is, is that a good word for it? That's a very polite way to say it. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's a wild, I like herdness. Yeah. He, uh, he's a wild card, but I mean, he's, he's been okay. I mean, it, he's been a third, fourth cornerback. That's what they brought him in for. He got pressed into duty. Due to injuries, but I mean he's he's been okay. So I mean yeah, he's, he's serviceable. Can't complain. It, it, if he kept his mouth shut, then no one would be really be talking. They'd be saying, "Oh yeah," and he he was fine. So that's true. Oh well. 
we move on. Um, last draft pick or draft pick, last uh, free agent we want to talk about real quick is Irv Smith Jr. Tight end signed him. Um, he is young. He's only 24 years old. Um, he's had some injuries to deal with over the um, over the course of the last few seasons. But you want someone who's physical, someone who is a physical freak. Um, he's a big wide receiver is what he is. He's 6'3", six, uh, six, 240. I mean, he's shorter for a tight end. Um, he provides a little bit in the blocking, but he's a guy who's fast. He's a guy who's got more explosive ability than we've had with Uzama. Uh, more explosive ability than what we had with Hayden Hurst. And as everyone is finding out, Joe Burrow gets tight ends paid. I mean, he, yeah. you know, he, he'll have a decent year here. He'll go out and sign three years for $24 million with somebody next year. So, yeah, I'm not, um, I see a lot of, a lot of Bengals fans are pumped, pumped about this signing. And I'm not unhappy by any means. I think it's uh, similar to Sidney Jones there. It's a low risk, high reward. But I, uh, my litmus test is usually how does the team or the fans of the team that are losing the guy feel. And the Vikings fans in my life are not too sad that he is no longer with Minnesota. So I don't know. He's, like I said, 6'2", 6'3". That's kind of concerning to me from a tight end standpoint. But if there's anybody that can uh, utilize this guy's you know, top end speed and his uh, athleticism, it's definitely Joe Burrow. Question is, and I think we'll get to this in more detail later, do you um, see this affecting their approach in the draft when it comes to the tight end position at all? I think it just checks off a box that there's no longer a needs to uh, right right next to it. They can they can wait and find a tight end that fits in their fits on their draft board uh, to where they're picking. Yeah. Uh, if they didn't pick Irv Smith and they were forced just to pick back up um, – uh, Seaton Carter was is, is like one of the next highest rated tight ends. He was around Bengals for a couple Ooh. years. He was in Miami, yeah, and he's just a depth piece. Um, so yeah, this definitely ticks off, you know, it, someone who you know, someone who's starter ab- ability. Um, also has great hair, which is important. he does. It's 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 there's a lot of flow going on, man. I I, I can't pull that off. I don't have that look. <laughs> From um, Hayden Hurst to Irv Smith Jr. I mean, we are. Uh... They like their tight ends to have, have some locks. Yeah. Uh, your Vikings fan friends can suck it, by the way. Um, th- that being said, they I, to- I agree with that, by the way. Yeah. I don't know if they listen to this podcast, but if they do, hey, guys, suck it. Yeah. Um, they've got TJ Hawkinson, so they've got a good tight end. So, yeah, losing Irv Smith isn't a huge, you know, that that's tight end too for him. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the guy's almost, I mean, he was almost drafted as a huge wide receiver but he has wide receiver skills in terms of uh run after catch uh if, if you've watched any of his uh i don't don't have any pulled up here uh some of his highlights he moves and some of the uh the routes that he runs just so smooth uh, a lot of tight ends you're gonna get a little kind of robotic in their uh in their breaks and everything and and he just runs so smooth catches the ball on the run and can break tackles and again he's got four six speed which for a tight end some 240 pounds that that's you know that's as good as some uh, some defensive backs, and you can you know run away or you know keep pace with them. So yeah, we'll see what the uh, what the happens in the draft. But you have to imagine this coaching staff is starting to salivate a little bit with the uh, both sides of the ball, the just the sheer athleticism yeah. and the opportunities that that provides. So I'm pretty excited about seeing how this offense looks once everybody starts clicking and a few other things shake out. Yeah, at the very least, just get a bunch of athletes and figure out how they all. Uh, yeah. Throw them in a bog, you know, throw them in a bog, we'll shake them and see how they all turn out. I mean, that's you right. never have too many athletes. Um, that's as of now, that's kind of all the signings that's been going on. Um, they had a couple guys visit a couple uh, days ago, both defensive linemen, uh, Terrell Basham. I don't know if it's Terrell or Terrell. Uh, he's an edge rusher from um, uh, Tennessee. Didn't really do much last year. I, I didn't look into what the situation was. I uh, didn't have any sacks, didn't have it. more than anything. He would just be depth. Uh, the other guy that came in that I'm really interested in that I think would be an awesome pickup if they could pull it off is Contavia Street. He is a, a, a three technique a defensive tackle from um, uh, from New Orleans. Uh, three and a half sacks as a backup lineman. Played on the 2018 NC State defense with BJ Hill and Jermaine Pratt. Those guys mm-hmm. had to be really good. And NC State is a known for having a you know that outside of Philip Rivers and a few others like they're not known as a football powerhouse, but that must have been no. one hell of a defense. And it's three. Yeah, also legendary name. I love 
Terrell Basham and Contavious Street. Both good things. Um, we'll see what happens there. I was a little surprised to see them targeting the defensive line, but I'm not mad about it. They need depth. Uh, this is DJ Readers last year. Um, they didn't get enough push from the pocket anyway from um, – BJ Hill kind of took a little while to get going and they didn't have anyone behind him. They have it's high only hopes DJ readers. It's only DJ readers last year because he has to campaign and run for president. You have my vote, sir. Sure. Um, but yeah, and it's more, you know, they're deaf. They're going to target defensive linemen in the draft. Um, again, it's get athletic, stay athletic. And you want those guys being able to come through in waves. Um, yeah. The best teams, they, I mean, how many guys did the Eagles have on the defensive line that had five, six, seven, eight sacks? Uh, you sure. just keep bringing fresh guys in. They're not going to get worn down. So, um, Katie Blackburn did her yearly visit with reporters this year. They're at the owners meeting out in Arizona. Um, just a couple things of note to uh, that she said. I mean, sp- spoke on a lot of things, like one about the stadium and renovations. I'm not going to go into that because that's boring. Um, Talking about Joe Burrow's extension talks, they will wrap up or wrap up. They will ramp up now since the bulk of free agent work is done so they can focus more on that. Um, obviously, they're beyond optimistic. Like It's, it, it's going to get done. It's just when and how much. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's, it, it's whether he's going to be able to buy a chain of islands or just a few islands. I mean, give him, give him the whole archipelago, or however you pronounce that. Archipelago. Archipelago? Archipelago. That's yeah. it. Archipelago yeah. sounds like a hotel in Vegas. Uh, yeah, and there's th- 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 there's a music term that's arpe- – I, I don't know. I'm not in music. I don't, I don't know. That's the thing I like about this show compared to the Red, the Red Show. The Red Show often goes off the rails pretty quickly. We just choose to never get on the rails. If you stay <laughs> off <laughs> – there's the less sense, sense the less expectations. Yeah. Like we've got a framework of things, you know, of, of what we're, you know, supposed to be hitting. And, and, and we rarely, rarely hit those. It's, you know, like, oh, hell, I was, you know, I'm way up here. I totally missed something. But that's the fun of are, it. Are we going to talk about Jonah Williams at all? We will get we to Jonah Williams. He's, he's okay. my next. Okay. I'll say he's my next point to make after this one. Um, interesting her comments about Joe Mixon. Um, it was a non-answer answer, but it was a very non-committal mm-hmm. Qu- uh, quote is, I don't want to say anything's happening because that's not fair. You've, uh, you've seen other teams that have had to make moves. Could we get to that point? Maybe, but it'll be down the road here and we'd have to see if that, what makes sense or not. Um, for not yet, he is the starter right now. Um, I honestly think that they were holding off making any, uh, any decisions, seeing how free agency was playing out and then just seeing how all the legal crap is playing out. I mean, the, uh, the unfortunate shooting at, you know, at his house, it was his sister's boyfriend that was charged with it. Uh, apparently he, uh, Joe's been receiving death threats over the, oh. um, over the menacing in- incident, charge, non-charge, whatever, you know, whatever's happening with that, um, that he was arrested, their arrest warrant was issued and then rescinded, uh, from the uh, day the Bengals left for Buffalo for the playoff game. Um, I don't know what, you know something's going to happen. He's not playing here at 12, uh, at uh, $12 million in 2023. Does it affect the cap hit differently if they cut bait before or after June 1st? Yeah, there's a, it's, um, if you cut, if you designate as a uh, post uh, June 1st cut, it's, uh, it's only $2 million hit. You save $10 oh, million. So, dollars, so that's what they're waiting for, right? Well, but you can, you, you can cut them now and designate them. Uh, they've already, there, there's already a few guys like, it's weird how that works because you can wait, you know, cut them with that, but they can still go on and sign. I guess you, the, you just can't sign anything until all the paperwork goes through. But okay. um, and I wonder how much is just waiting to see how soon they need to have that money freed up for uh borough or um, uh, Higgins extensions. However, those go through. Sure. Uh, speaking of T and we'll get back to Katie Blackburn's comments here in a minute. See, he's back. He's going to be wearing number five. Drop it 85. He's wearing number five. The most famous Cincinnati athlete ever to wear the number five. I don't disagree. Um, unfortunately, Tyler Boyd will not be dropping the eight from his jersey to be number three. So we'd have the 513 connection. That see, that would be awesome. That would be cool. 
he but I mean he I, I mean, already shot it down today on uh on Twitter. I'm like, dude, come on, be you know, be cool, be cool. Okay. <laughs> on to the uh, shall we say uh, elephant on in the room about uh, Jonah Williams. Um, her she didn't really make any comments too much about that that were interesting. But onto the whole weird situation. Um, he says he was blindsided by the move uh, of signing Orlando Brown and and, and what and is why he uh, requested a trade. Um, Joe Burrow knows the feeling of being blindsided, but it's Jonah Williams' fault he's blindsided because he's been a mediocre left tackle. What do you? I mean, do you think it's fair? Do you? I mean, what do you? Do you see his yes. point, or is it like, dude, you you're not very good. Suck it up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. I think it's fair to have your feelings hurt. I think it's natural when they bring someone in to replace you. Yeah, you're going to feel a little bit slighted. But get over it. Do better. You're in the last year of your deal, and you're not good. You're one of the worst yeah. starting tackles in the entire NFL. Like, I don't have a problem with Jonah. He tries hard, but he's not very good. So you can't sit there and complain. I mean, you're going to demand a trade. Who's going to give up something for you? Why would anybody give up something for you? Be better at your job, and we wouldn't have to do this. Go play right tackle like a good kid, and leave me alone. Yeah, I mean he's he's capable of playing a of being an average left tackle. I, I think that says a lot of, more about the uh, quality of offensive line play in the NFL than anything else. Um, but he's also someone who's undersized. He's short for for tackle. He's light for a tackle. Uh, he's got short arms, which you know. Uh, a lot of people, even when Bengals was drafted, him, yeah, the T Rex arms. Uh, a lot of people uh, were questioning when they drafted him whether he's better on the uh, playing the inside, playing the guard. Um, honestly, I think he's better suited to play right tackle than left tackle anyway. Uh, Lane Johnson just got a huge, 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 huge extension from the Eagles playing right tackle. So if his concern about wanting to play left tackle is because he doesn't want to lose out on money, um, play better on the other side, and you, and, and you can get a huge. Uh, Get a gigantic yeah. contract. Play better in yeah. general. Just play better. Just play yeah. better. I mean, I, I I like Jonah. I'm not I don't have any sort of like ill will or animosity, even as a fan. But it's just a it's just a strange move to me to try to go for this like power play when you're not good. Like you have no power. Yeah. So I don't know. Like I hope I hope he figures it. Out. I hope he comes back. I want you end up you know, be a bangle. I want to contribute and be good. But it's a weird <laughs> headline. Weird series of headlines. It's funny because it's almost like he's never paid attention to any bit of Cincinnati Bengals history. They don't trade someone when they ask out. Like there have yeah. been two like extreme outlier situations when uh, Carlos Dunlap was literally burning every bridge and burning everything down, forcing his way out in uh, uh, 2020. Literally putting depth charts, you know, pictures from the locker room depth charts and posting his house for sale on Instagram. <laughs> oh, that was weird. Um, and then Carson Palmer, like, threatening to retire. They were, they were gonna, they were fine letting him stay retired. Like, piss on you. You know, we've got our quarterback. We've got a wide receiver. We don't need you. Uh, until the Raiders blew him away with a really terrible, God, the Raiders were terrible. Um, gave him two first rounders. Or first round and a second yeah, first round in the second round. That was uh, um, they uh, got uh, Kirkpatrick and Gio Bernard with the draft picks they received for him. But that's they were content letting them uh, uh letting them stay retired. They weren't going to trade them and, except for the fact they got blown away. Um, you're playing chicken with a guy that is is asleep. Like you're not going to lose. Or this guy isn't going to lose because he's just not playing the game. <laughs> but he might not even still be alive. We haven't seen Mike Brown in a while. Who knows? So um, that kind of wraps up the Bengals news of the last you know week and a half or so. Uh, just a couple quick league wide issues here before we go to the topic. Um, did you know Aaron Rodgers is still a Packer? It's mind blowing. Um, <laughs> I can't believe there's been almost no developments <laughs> at all on this, other than then to say that there's no developments. So I don't know. It's been two weeks since they you know since he came out and you know said with yeah i've you know I've, I've asked them to facilitate a trade and it's like i guess they're both operating under the assumption that he's gonna end up you know on the jets and like they're acquiescing to his demands to signing ill-fitting guys to their roster trading young wide receivers for 
and signing older wide receivers. And apparently they're in the mix for Odell Beckham. I don't, it's, it's, the Jets are going to Jets. They have a good young roster. They don't, you know what they need to do is go and get the other guy that I was going to talk about, Lamar Jackson. Say hell, say, say hell to you, you know, you flake ass uh, Aaron Rodgers and sign a better, younger quarterback. Equally as flaky. But more talent, like more, he's going to be there in 2024. If Aaron Rodgers yeah. was 90% committed to retiring before he went on his darkness retreat, again, God, what a fucking weirdo, man. Jesus. <laughs> I'm with you. We're on the same page with Aaron Rodgers. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm interested to say he was a two-time MVP the season before last. So I don't, I'm not ruling him out, but I don't have much faith. But I am just not on the Lamar Jackson train. I don't get it. The guy is extremely talented. He had one really good year and then some pretty okay years. He's really bad in the playoffs. He's only won one game. He's been injured, but also, I don't know. Like I get from his standpoint, you don't go out there and play when you're. It might hurt your team. I think he was kind of saying that in the media today, but I don't figure it out, man. You can't you can't demand money that nobody thinks you should get paid. Like nobody wanted Deshaun Watson to get paid. The Browns ruined that for everybody. Yeah, he he wasn't worth that contract just because he signed it doesn't mean you are. So we'll see. I don't know how that's going to go. I hope that he leaves the AFC North, but I don't think he's going to get two hundred million guaranteed. Yeah, he's not going to get anywhere near what he's asking for. What he needs to do is accept the franchise tender and then work out a trade to wherever. I, I, I think it's – do you think he can go back to the Ravens? No, I think it's done. I think yeah. they're done now. It seems um, like they are done. Yeah, apparently he made a formal trade request to them on March 5th. Uh, the Ravens responded by signing Nelson Aguilar. Next best thing. <laughs> Like this guy's complaining because you haven't assigned any weapons. You traded away Hollywood Brown and you sign just the dude. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. I love to see it because the Ravens have been that sort of like beacon of consistency in this division for so long. So the more turmoil that I'm uh, picking up from the East Coast, the better, in my opinion. But it has just been weird. Like, how do you. So you. A, a, Good quarterback on a rookie deal is the most valuable thing in the NFL. Yeah. They squandered that opportunity with Lamar. Um, love him or hate him. He is a very good quarterback, at the very least, yeah. with, with elite potential. So they squandered that. They did not give him weapons. They didn't build a championship caliber, caliber roster around him. Well, then after that, you also kind of, okay, well, he's not cheap anymore. But having your answer at quarterback – be a known for the next decade seems like a pretty good position to be in. And they're going to squander that too. And who are they going to get? Mac Jones and a couple draft picks from the Patriots. I don't know. It's been very, very confusing. Uh, I don't know, a couple of years really, but specifically the last six months out of Baltimore. Yeah. You try to give them the benefit of the doubt because yeah, they've been consistent. Like they've been lauded for having one of the best front offices for, I mean, what, 20 years now. Um, but you look at, like, Ozzy Newsom isn't around anymore. I mean, DaCosta's like, again, these are guys that are well-regarded, but maybe they're not so good. Maybe, you know, maybe we're kind of overrated. Because, I mean, this is this is the biggest, like, screw-up. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, are you going to just take a draft pick? Are you going to put um, uh, start Snoop Huntley or Anthony Brown or take some scrub quarterback that some other – uh, Team doesn't want like Mac Jones. Great, nobody wants that guy. He's a he's Grayson Allen. He's he's kind of a bitch. Um, I don't know. It's all very very weird. Yeah. Again, I, I hope I hope everything. I hope he gets stuck going back to the Ravens, uh, and then just absolutely torpedoes everything, um, and then gets a huge bag from somebody next year, and flips him the finger like that. That's for me as a fan of a rival team. Just blow it all up, man. Yeah, agreed. It would be fun. Um progressing on to our topic of the week. This is kind of just a uh, roster update. We did this when the offseason started. Um, just catching up with where they are, what they still need to do, um, if, if any needs have changed since, you know, um, since, uh, since the offseason started. Um, it's interesting. Um, we'll start a quarterback. Obviously, I, I think they're okay with their starter. I don't think they're going to bring in any competition. Uh, any thoughts? Um, I heard they're in the Lamar Jackson sweepstakes. They also considered trading uh, T. Higgins and Jamar Chase for Aaron Rodgers, 
but they're waiting on that to flesh out. Uh, just, as long as they get Mercedes Lewis, a 38-year-old Mercedes Lewis uh, play Love tight end. Um, it's interesting. They were actually in play to uh, – uh, to get Cooper Rush, the uh, backup quarterback at Dallas, and he's actually a pretty good backup. Uh, it's pretty clear that I think they're done with Brandon Allen. I mean, he's a free agent anyway. Uh, but outside of being a good friend to Joe Burrow, he doesn't really provide much. Um, yeah, it's we've seen him come in just you know either in mop up or when he was injured, and he's he he doesn't have any upside. Uh, right now, they still have Jake Browning, who's a guy that they like, but you know, I I would not. Or I would be surprised if they don't pluck a quarterback uh, somewhere early on day three, like maybe around five or you know something like that. Stetson Bennett maybe uh, around five or six. Um, I think he's, I think he's older than Mercedes Lewis. Yeah, he, he's been around for a long, long ass time. Um, running back room is a lot has changed. Uh, I think we were both pretty convinced that uh, Samaj P. Ryan was going to come back. Yeah, that's been one of the big, uh, bigger surprises of the offseason for me. Yeah, and 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 I don't blame him. I mean, his reasoning was uh, Sean Payton has been a lot has been wanting to utilize uh, multiple backs, mm-hmm. and even as uh, you know, even as running back too, he's you know he's going to get a lot of carries, and I get that. Um, yeah, he's going to get more playing time and a higher dollar amount than he would have had here. Like, don't blame him a bit. He will be missed, but also not a not a needle mover. Like we weren't going to win the Super Bowl because of Smiley P. Ryan. Yeah, I mean, he's his value is that he's a good blocking back. I mean, he's okay yeah, running, the ball. He's okay receiving. Uh, my wife's going to miss him. That she was, uh, he was her favorite player. Uh, she's convinced that he looks like he's a professor. Uh, does something in academia with the big beard. Uh, he just looks very <laughs> scholarly. He's so she's kind of yeah. He, he he's got a uh, uh, a blazer with you know with the patches. That's right. You know, corduroy blaze with the patches on the elbow, maybe history professor, but he's got to do something uh, scholarly. So she's sad that he yeah. left. For um, me, that the running back room is the uh, the biggest question mark on offense. Yeah, I mean, now that they've answered tight end at least temporarily, yeah, what's going to happen? Because looking down this depth chart, Travion Williams and Chris Evans don't don't seem to be any sort of answer, and Joe Mixon's likely to not be on the team at all. So. There are a lot of Bengals fans out there clamoring for them to use a first round draft pick on a running back. And I'm like, he must not listen to this show very much. Talking to you, Skyler. Right. These guys are good, but a, the team like Cincinnati needs to uh, focus more on depth and consistency to keep this window open as long as possible. And you don't do that by early round, first round, specifically draft picks on running backs. You need to build, I don't know, build your team out a little bit more strategically than that. So we're, we'll see. I mean, they're going to have to do something. I, don't yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, – I'm convinced they will draft a running back uh, round three or four. I, I'm still – I am I am in love with and looking at uh, Tajay Spears from Tulane. Uh, he's a little dude, but he is fast as hell. Uh, great hands in the passing game. Um, he's a willing blocker, which is more than you can say about Mixon. Um, but, again, like – for a lead back, I don't. You'd like them to be able to add something just as a uh, uh, blitz pickup, but Bengals run five wide, or they, you know, or they split their running back out, or put them out in pass patterns. So expecting right. that guy to uh, to do a ton of pass protection, that that's not the offense that they run. Um, they want everyone split out and get rid of it, so he doesn't have to pick up. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think that their twenty twenty three leading rusher is not on the roster right now. Yeah, and that's even if they keep uh, mixing because there's a chance that they keep them. I mean, they have they've got a full roster even with his salary, so it's not imperative for them to get rid of him to to make room. But um, yeah, I still think the leading running uh, leading rusher is not on this roster. Yeah. Anything uh, else stand out to you on the offensive side? Um, what are they doing right tackle? That's again, that's yeah. I think that's where they should be targeting with uh, with their first pick. Um, again, it depends on how the, you know, don't reach, don't reach, don't reach. That's how you end up with Cedric Oboehe. But, um, if you can convince Jonah Williams to play right tackle, and I get the point, like he was a left tackle. He hasn't played right in eight years and that's, it's completely different. It's not, you know, it, it's not just like going to the other side and immediately picking up where you left off. Um, but I think if he can, you know, get a 
get his panties out of the bunch that they're in and suck it up. I mean, he's talented. He was a first, he was a no doubt first rounder. He was drafted what top Bengals picked him at 11 or 12 or something. So, I mean, he was a high first round draft pick. He's got the ability to play. It's just quit being a little whiny baby and (laughs) play ball out and then go get a contract next year. Show your versatility. You can make, you know, you can sell your versatility for teams giving you a multi-year contract. So, um, outside of that, again, just they brought in depth. They brought in Cody Ford. Um, to uh, they listed him as a tackle, even though he hasn't played the tackle uh, in several years. He was a guard and a very bad one at that. But again, just just more offensive line depth. Um, I think a lot of the guys that we're used to seeing around or might be gone. Uh, Dante Smith's probably not going to be around next year. Um, I think they still like Adenogy. They listed Carmen as being in the um, competition for the right tackle spot, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's not on the team come uh, uh, come week one. So I think there's going to be a lot of like the back of the room that's going to, or, you know, the, the reserves that are still going to get um, shuffled through between now and the beginning of the season. But outside of that, I mean, they're pretty set on wide receiver one, two, and three. I mean, those guys are decent. Um yeah, we're not we're not unhappy with the wide receiver room. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe we could have used the Nelson Aguilar, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, um, on the defense again, right as of right now, ass- you don't assume health, but you can. But if Cheeto is ready to go for training camp, uh, all eleven starters are set. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, that's, that's awesome to have. So again, you draft who the best athlete is, who the best player is, uh, come pick 28. Um, yeah, I'm, um, we talked about it at length earlier, so no need to relitigate that. I'm a little worried about the safeties. I'm excited about the, the ceiling. I'm excited about the potential with the safeties, but that's, you know, it's a question mark for me. But other than that, man, I, I am at some level of content with every starter on defense I even like most of their backups. <laughs> like this is the defense is going to. It's, it's weird to say for an offense as good as Cincinnati's, but the defense might carry this team next year. Well, I mean, the defense has carried the off uh, carried the team through uh, last two postseasons. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a team that went to the Super Bowl. It, as great as the offense was, um, that's when the line issues really, you know, really shown through the last two years was in the playoffs. That's um, so the defense was absolutely their carrying card. Um, they've got the ability. I'm not like, I'm not going to say I'm not concerned about the safeties. Um, you got athletes, you got to, you draft, you got the guy who you drafted to replace Bates, replacing Bates. Uh, he's more athletic. He's, um, uh, more dynamic. Um, you've got a lot more athletic guy playing in bell spot. It's the experience of those two guys playing together. I mean, they played pretty much every snap for three straight years side by side. And they're just yeah. incredibly bright, intelligent guys i mean those those are coaches on the field and that's going to be i think where they're missing more than anything else but your other nine starters are experienced starters they're all guys that have started for the team i mean the most at least experienced starter is uh cam taylor Britton. he had nine starts last year she just started for several years and we started for a year and a half before he got you know here before he got hurt your linebackers your d line they're all set i mean you i love it I mean, yeah, you, you want that experience. I mean, those guys were both last year. Uh, Von Bell was a safety two year, or was a uh, captain two years ago. Jesse Bates was a captain. But I think that's something these guys will grow into, and then and they'll be okay. So it'll it'll just you know, I get the wrinkles ironed out, you know, and get everything situated earlier in the season. And by week five, week six, I I really don't think you're going to notice yeah. too much. And again, Lou yeah. Anarum was a fucking. I mean, I mean he's a he's a maniac how that guy doesn't have a head coaching job. I'm selfishly happy, but what are we doing guys? Somebody hire this man. Makes no sense, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's their, their stupidity is our game. So, um, special teams, um, McPherson didn't have a good year, but they're not, unless they just bring in a, a camp leg just to have someone else to give him, you know, just so he's not uh, doing all the kicks. Um, and you know, he's, he's a place kicker. Um, they brought back Adam Midas, so you've got you know you've got your long snapper. They are absolutely going to bring in a um, bring in a punter. Um, yeah, Drew Christman was better than Kevin Huber. 
barely, I guess. Um, but he, you know, I mean, there, there's an argument to be made that, that he cost in that last drive. Um, I, I kind of hope he's not the punter. As much as everyone was begging for him to take over, he he, he sucked. Um, I've seen a lot of mocks like the Bengals uh, picking one of the higher uh, higher ranked punters uh, in like round six or seven. The guy from Michigan State. Um, there's another guy out west. I can't remember where he's from, you know, but th- they'll have you know th- they'll they'll have a, a rookie punter in to yeah. presumably take the job, but at least for competition for Adamitis. For sure, I don't. Yeah, you know, I don't think we need to spend too much time on special teams, but they got the punt returner back. Yeah, I just hope, I hope I hope McPherson gets his crap together. He was it was so fun having a rock star kicker. Yeah, and, and he wasn't terrible last year. It's just he wasn't as good, you know, um, wasn't as good as kind of what we were expecting him to be. And again, come playoff time, he made all you know made all the kicks. So. Um, again, you, you just want a little more consistency, just kind of the dumb misses, like extra points. And like, come on, man. Yeah. Just we'll have someone tell you, like, dude, it's the AFC championship game. Where you got uh, where are you gonna go in the draft? What do you think their what do you think the Bengals front office mindset is heading into the draft? I think it's more just the handful of positions that they will get, not so much a in uh not so much like when they'll get them. They're going to get an, uh, an offensive tackle, someone to play right tackle long term. Um, again, it will be nice if one of the top guys are still around at, uh, at spot 28, but I don't want them to reach. There was concerns. Like everyone fell in love with uh, Jones out of Ohio State. He's the guy who's six foot nine, 370 pounds. I mean, literally a goddamn monster. Um, his testing at Ohio State's Pro Day was pretty bad. So the thinking is no longer like whether or not that guy's going to be there 28. It's whether or not, Hey, this guy might be there at 60 or at least, you know, or at least somewhere in the forties or fifties. Um, honestly, I, I think the Bengals are going to trade back with their first pick. I think they're going to have a bunch really? of guys. Yeah. I, I think there's going to be a bunch of guys that they're interested in available and they'll trade out of the first round, meaning that people, that Bengals fans are going to be waiting around three, four hours because the first round takes forever. <laughs> and now on the clock, pick number 20, Cincinnati Bengals, and they've traded. And they're like, ah, crap, okay, come back tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, I, I really think this is the year they trade back. And they don't have any extra picks. They, they just have their original seven picks. They'll trade back to get an additional second or the, whatever it comes out to. Um, and then they'll have I, – I think they'll, they're they going to pick up a tight end. There are, It's a crazy deep tight end draft. Um, Dane Brugler, who is the – for all of you that don't subscribe to the athletic, I know it's you know pay you know pay this uh, subscription and everything, and those are kind of kind of a pain. And but his draft guide, if you're a a, a member, he's got what's called the Beast. Um, it should be coming out soon. He hasn't released it yet. It's write ups on 500 some odd players in depth, uh, background like all you know you, you hear about their high school and their family and everything. All, all of their you know it's the most in depth draft. Uh, draft guide you're going to find. Um, but he's got seven tight ends in his top 100 on, on his big board. Wow. Uh, Bengals, Bengals can get some, uh, can get a stud in second round. Um, again, if they trade back to get an extra second round pick um, so that, you know, they have something in like the thirties and then 60. Um, again, they, they can take off a offensive tackle. They can take off a, uh, maybe Sam Laporta, the tight end out of uh, Iowa. Or pray that Darnell Washington, the huge ass tight end out of Georgia, um, that would be a fun guy to, to have for the record. Uh, he's six seven to two seventy as a tight yeah. end and runs runs a four six. That that would be an awesome guy to have too. So, um, but again, outside of those two, they're gonna have a gonna pick up a, a running back at some point, probably early day three, if not round three, um, and then just depth for the lines. There'll, there'll be a safety that's probably picked up for special teams. Uh, then a wide receiver, you know, again, it's just whoever's the top of the board when their spot comes up because they don't need to get anybody immediately. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> we talked about it plenty off air. I don't follow the draft. I don't follow college football the way that uh, I do the NFL. So I don't have a ton to add there, but 
I think that's the biggest storyline left this offseason is what needs are they going to address? How are they going to use the draft to continue to keep this Joe Burrow window open as long as possible? And I don't know. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, as much as I, you know, as much as the excitement for the draft is tempered when you're good and you don't and you're drafting like less sexy picks. I mean, you don't want to have to get a quarterback, but looking at, you know, looking at potential quarterbacks, that's fun. Like that, yeah. I mean, that, that's the, you know, that's the payoff for, for sucking ass. You, you know, you get to look at how awesome was Joe Burrow, uh, Justin Herbert, you know, he was really good, you know, or two, you know, like that's fun. And as boring as it is having a roster full of set positions and picking at the back, you know, the back of the uh, round when you really have no idea who's even going to be out there. Um, it's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, just kind of seeing how everything plays out because they've, they've been smart. Uh, with their draft boards the last few years so yeah it's gonna be a fun uh a fun summer yeah um and we still have almost a month until draft season so we got a lot of time to fill between now and then madness <laughs> you want to do some viewer mail yeah man let's get to it let's view some mail uh first one and these are by people in our slack channel um i also put a call out on uh on twitter anyone has any questions send them over to us um the more the better they have they sh- they don't have to do with with uh football they don't have to do with Bengals. they can just be the most nonsensical crap because those are more fun that's right but i digress um andrew moran asks with the nfl now allowing uniform number zero who on the Bengals do they do you think should change their number uh should burrow fully embrace the joe burr nickname and rock the zero what are your thoughts? I, I love it we can go with the little degrees symbol joe burrow is zero degrees um, I don't know. I think it works. Maybe, maybe Joe Mixon because that's how many plays he should uh, be on the field for in a that's Bengals it. uniform next year. I like it. Um, no, boy. I'm, I'm gonna go off the board. Um, I didn't mention linebacker as a potential draft spot, but they'll probably draft a linebacker. My favorite linebacker, number zero, Corin High School, University of Cincinnati, Ivan Pace Jr. Uh, he wore zero at UC. Um, if you ever get a chance, pull up his tape. He is undersized. He's like five uh, five eleven. I, I forget the actual uh, measurement. Like two thirty. He's a missile. I've never seen someone that size absolutely bull rush and overrun offensive guards. I mean, he, these are guards that are three hundred and forty pounds. And they've got a hundred pounds on him, and he's bull rushing them, and he's rushing the passer, and he's just the most fun, uh, probably the most fun guy that I've watched play. Um, you know, the sauce was awesome to watch at UC, but. When he's not, when no one's throwing the ball over to his side of the field, that's kind of boring. Yeah, uh, that's my kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, like it's perfect fit, hometown guy. We've lost our uh, Cincinnati born, bred, and college guy with and Huber. So, and I, I'm not counting any of those Ohio State guys. Y'all can pound rocks. Columbus is not Cincinnati, so piss off. Um, I, I'm, I'm angry in a hold. Like, there's like 90 percent crossover that Bengals <laughs> fans to Ohio State fans, but I'm that 10 percent. Damn it. <laughs> Mike Hello. Perry asks, are we better than last year? Are we worse? I'm really confused. Um, Great question. Great question. Mike, so am I. I. I'm really confused, but that has nothing to do with, uh, um, you know, with, with how the Bengals are. It more has to do with just very early onset senility and dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> for me, I think they're currently a little bit worse. But they're on their way to getting better. I think that get a serviceable running back um, once those safeties are up to snuff. You know, I, I don't think that Orlando Brown signing can really go understated. Like, the line is going to be better. It's going to be much improved. I think there's a couple holes they need to fill. But by the time uh, the draft is over, I think we're going to feel even better about this team than we did going into last season. Honestly, I think they're – Better if, like, the same if not better. Um, they downgraded two positions to both safeties. They will – and, again, I'm counting Jonah Williams as the right tackle because he's on the roster and he's the best option to play there. Uh, they've upgraded two positions on, you know, on the offense. They've upgraded left and right tackle. Um, and then the other guys that have left, uh, Irv Smith to Hayden Hurst – I think they're going to put up comparable numbers. I think Smith might get fewer catches, but more yards. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, P Ryan is a backup running back. I'm not, you you lose your backup running back. Like you're not, 
not really moving like that. That's not really rocking the boat too much one way or the other. Right. Um, outside of that, they really haven't lost anything. So as a whole, I, I think they're, they've got a higher ceiling mm-hmm. than what they had. I mean, yeah, it, it's like going to be going to be growing pains in the secondary, but you're more athletic. Um, Von Bell for all, you know, for all of his, you know, how much like influence that he had, um, the attitude that like he helped change the culture. Uh, it can't be overstated that hit the, the hit that he made on Juju on Monday night football. That was the last year burrows out with a knee injury. Like he absolutely blows him up, causes a fumble and they win the game with Ryan. Goddamn Finley over the uh, Steelers on Monday night football of, of all days. Um, Von Bell wasn't the most athletic, um, very smart, instinctual and better in pass coverage than I expected him to be. But uh, Nick Scott's a better athlete, a lot better athlete. Yeah. Yeah. So I like yeah. the I like the I like the moves they made. Yeah. I, I, again, I, I think they're. Uh, I mean, we still have the draft to go. So I mean, that's you. You know, I, I think they will be. Vegas believes in them. Um, not really going to get into it, but um, they're over under on wins. Uh, there's a few teams: uh, Chiefs, Bengals, and. I, Eagles and Niners, maybe I'm not sure. Uh, they all have the highest uh, over under for win uh, win totals at 11 and a half. Love so, that. yeah. Um, also, we don't have to deal with Patrick Mahomes' family, so that makes us better than the Chiefs. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Charlie Zollers asks he is uh, he is a student at UCF, so he's asking. This is more geared towards me. Who will have more wins next year, UCF and UC combined in their first year? moving to the big 12 or the Bengals. Um, I think I'm going to take the Bengals on that. Um, I have no idea what UC is going to be next year in football. Uh, having to start over with a new coach. There's so much roster turnover. There's still going to be a lot more roster turnover. Once the uh, summer transfer portal, they have like five quarterbacks, like who are, have starting aspirations. Um, you know, on their roster right now, um, none of them are great options. A lot of those guys are going to be out. A lot of those guys, you know, so I, I have no idea what to make heads and tails of the roster. I think they might win five or six games. Um, there's talent there, but I don't know how, you know, none of these guys have played with each other before. Um, UCF, they're at least keeping their coach, so, but they're still going to be the huge uh, uh, um, change of having to play you're not playing the East Carolinas or the temples anymore. You're playing Baylor and you're playing Oklahoma and Texas. Um, I can see them maybe win more than the Bengals, maybe six games, seven games. Um, I think the Bengals are going to win more than 12 games if you can't play off. So I will take the over with the Bengals. Then uh, my Bearcats and your uh, Citronauts. I mean, that's by the way, is, is there a better a worse name change from Citronauts to the golden Knights to the Knights? How cool would it be if, if Central Florida kept the Citronauts? Yeah, they, uh, they, a, they made a mistake there. It's an astronaut with an orange as a head. Coolest Perfect. damn thing. They changed that. Charlie, make something happen, man. Do a protest. Make them change the name back. Love it. I'm about ready to wrap up, Nate. What about you? Man, that's it. I can smell the food from the, emanating from the kitchen. What do you got? I I I, I had I grilled that steak on the grill tonight, and that, that was delightful. So Ooh, what, do you, what do you got? Sounds good. I don't know what we have. I just know that if I don't go eat it soon, I'm going to get divorced two weeks after getting married. That's <laughs> yeah. It, I will definitely let you go on that note. Um, <laughs> you guys can find us. You guys have any questions, comments, concerns? Email us team at riverfrontcincy.com. We are on Twitter at the handle next to my name at tr bengal show, TikTok, MySpace. Um, well, TikTok, if TikTok is still a thing by the time this podcast gets released tomorrow morning, <laughs> we shall see. Hopefully so. It's fun. If, if not, we're only on MySpace. Yeah. Tom's our friend. Outside yeah. of that, everyone, take care. We'll see you next time. Boom. <laughs>